uh, plan for the uh, presentation. So let us uh, try to understand uh, what you mean by a gravel. Okay? So the word gravel is uh, derived from French word gravelly, so which represents a, a coarse sand. And in the background, you can see some of the gravel quarries and uh, deposits, and you can also see the gravel is being excavated. And uh, this mainly uh, forms due to weathering of the rocks and subsequently due to erosion of the rocks. And these are very uh, rounded shape. And uh, typically, if you look at this particle, so it is more or less a rounded shape. And you can also see the bigger size of the particles. So you are going to have a wide range of particles, uh, starting from uh, particles uh, ranging up to even 90 millimeters to all the way up to very uh, fine materials. So the composition varies uh, very widely. And uh, you can see that uh, this natural uh, gravel, we can use it in the construction of low volume roads, starting from all the layers. So we can use it for sub base, base, and even we can use it as a, a gravel surface course. So the main advantage is that uh, gravel is going, going to be quite cheap. And even uh, because the volume of traffic is going to be very much less, typically less than 0.1 million standard access, then we can uh, safely use this gravel uh, for uh, this low volumes of traffic where the stress levels are also going to be uh, much less. And you are going to have a typical standards. Uh, we are not going to go in details into the specification limits, which are given in the Ministry of Rural Road Development uh, specifications for uh, rural roads. So those details uh, you can uh, go through it. We will also be sharing the required uh, material to you. And additional details will be provided there. And uh, whenever you are going to construct the gravel roads, the performance of these gravel roads depends upon several aspects. So the most important point is we need to select the proper quality of the materials in case if you ensure superior quality of the materials or whatever specifications have been mentioned in the mode. So if you uh, satisfy all the requirements, so then you can expect a better performance of the road. And anyway, we, in India, we have better construction practices and uh, standards so that uh, that will also result in better performance of the gravel roads. And uh, there are certain restrictions, uh, which I will uh, present you a little later. So typically in hilly areas or wherever you are going to have heavy rainfall areas, in such cases, gravel roads are not recommended. Okay? So that is uh, where we need to be careful in selecting the gravel roads. And one of the major requirement of the gravel roads is that we need to ensure adequate drainage. Okay? So if you can ensure that, you provide uh, both longitudinal and uh, lateral or transverse uh, gradients to the acceptable limits, then you can expect better form performance. And even if you are going to provide a steeper gradients, and again, it results into a steeper uh, profiles on both longitudinal and transverse direction, that will also lead to erosion of the gravel. So thereby, again, performance comes down. So if you are not able to provide a required drainage, so we need to optimize the drainage. So the flat gradients are not desirable, even steep gradients are also not desirable. Both ways it is going to affect the performance of the gravel loads. So next is the traffic levels, uh, typically less than 0.1 million standard access. So that is uh, one lakh access. So we can uh, recommend the uh, gravels, thereby you can achieve better performance. That means we are going to look at only lower side of the low volume loads, less than one lakh uh, standard access or 0.1 million standard access. And one of the major issue with the gravel roads is that a periodic re-graveling. That means we need to maintain these roads at a, a regular intervals. But if you are going to do the life cycle cost analysis, they will to, to be much beneficial compared to their uh, counterparts or alternates that you have. And uh, one more uh, important point that we need to take into account is availability of resources, whether we have the required gravel deposits nearby. Otherwise, the leads are going to be uh, relatively higher. In such cases, if the leads are going to be higher, then we uh, drop that option. And even locally available materials also, we tend to uh, modify them suitably so that you can still make use of the materials and uh, construct the gravel roads. And I will also explain you some of those uh, details in case uh, if locally available material does not meet your specification limits. So how you can modify the uh, material so that 
you can enhance the uh, properties. So the one of the major uh, disadvantage of gravel roads is that we need to maintain it at a, a regular intervals. As I said, uh, if you allocate the life cycle cost analysis, then you can allocate a overall benefits for those uh, gravel loads, even by taking into account relatively higher uh, cost in, so in terms of the uh, re-graveling. And uh, the major issues with a uh, gravel is that, as I said, the gravel loss which occurs over the period of time. That means you need to periodically re-gravel these roads so that you can maintain the required condition of the road. And uh, that proves to be relatively expensive, but in the long run, you can uh, cover up those costs by looking at uh, more benefits. And uh, in uh, regions where you are going to have high rainfalls, normally we don't recommend gravel roads, but uh, the riding surface uh, becomes much uh, slippery or slushy whenever you are going to have uh, a monsoon seasons. So the speeds of the vehicles are going to reduce uh, significantly. Then uh, due to this uh, movement of the vehicles and uh, due, with the combination of the monsoon effect, so you are going to have uh, deformations occurring in the profile, so which results into corrugations resulting due to loss of funds. So that will again affect the uh, riding quality of the road users or leads to a lot of discomfort to the road users. So apart from this, one of the major issue with the gravel roads is the uh, dust nuisance. Okay. So we try to look at uh, how you can minimize that. So the consequences of a uh, dust nuisance is that, so the dust is going to affect the health of all the road users and also the near health of the nearby habitations. Apart from that, once the dust floats in the air, so it can deposit on the adjacent uh, fields and it can affect the yield of the crops also so both ways uh, in uh, if you look at a user point of view or the people residing nearby also it is going to affect the both the health and also the environment so that is also one of the major nuisance with the dust that will emanate whenever the surface becomes dry due to continuous movement of the vehicles or wherever you are going to have long spells of the dry seasons so normally uh, to avoid the dust nuisance, uh, normally we look at uh, two options. Uh, one is you can make use of the dust palliatives, which can suppress the dust. Otherwise, you can think about uh, sealing the surface so that you can make the surface impervious or you can prevent the dust nuisance. So these are the two alternatives that we have. And whenever you have two solutions, so we need to make a one-to-one -one comparison not only the initial cost, so we need to look at the overall maintenance cost and try to see uh, which alternative gives you a better or a higher benefits in the long run. So thereby you can select appropriate uh, solution. So let us look at what are the dust palliatives uh, that we have. So uh, those who uh, stay uh, typically near the mine areas, so uh, if you look at uh, Warangal or Telangana region, we have uh, Sindhirani colliders, so which extend uh, to several hundreds of kilometers. So normally they tend to uh, spray water both in the morning and evening time so that the coal which will be dumped on the road surfaces while carrying on the roads. So the dust can be suppressed by uh, spraying water. So that is a continuous process to uh, suppress uh, the dust nuisance. But uh, one of the major problem is that you know that uh, Vitaminous surfaces uh, will badly get affected when they are continuously exposed to the water. So that doesn't prove to be a good alternative in the uh, long run. So there are several other additives that we have. For example, so you can use salts which can absorb moisture from the ambient air and uh, holds the dust particles on the surface, so thereby you can minimize the dust nuisance. So apart from that, we also have several organic petroleum products and uh, non-petroleum products also. For example, if you look at petroleum products, you can make use of uh, uh, bitumen emulsions or uh, modified bitumen emulsions or even cut back or uh, dust uh, oils and several other type of uh, organic petroleum products you can use. Uh, similarly, you also have non-petroleum organic products like animal fats, lignosulfate, molasses and uh, several types of oils can be used to suppress the dust. Apart from that, nowadays you might have uh, heard about uh, various types of uh, stabilizers like uh, enzymes or even which works based on the ion exchange process. 
such process uh, products also you can use to suppress the dust then you also have synthetic polymer uh, products and uh, clay additives like a bentonite and modulant so these are some of the dust palliatives which can be used to suppress the dust so apart from that uh, you also have other alternatives in, in terms of uh, various types of sealing options so we'll try to look at uh, various types of sealing options now you can if you look at these uh, photographs the first photograph you can see that uh, you don't see any vehicle here so the vehicle has already passed and it might have reached at this particular point and you can see the complete dust cover okay? and in this photograph you can see there is a lead vehicle and there is also a following vehicle and the visibility reduces drastically in the presence of the dust that is uh, floating in the air okay? so here you can see the visibility is almost uh, zero and uh, how the road surface is before the moment of the vehicle and how the dust is created once the vehicle passes over the gravel roads. So not only the high speed vehicles, you can see even a typical uh, scenario in our country, even when you have the solid wheel cart, bullet cart that is moving, uh, you can see the fate of the two wheelers who are coming behind and uh, see the kind of dust that is created. Okay, so uh, mainly due to the animals and also the tires also uh, emanate a lot of dust from these gravel roads. So we need to uh, look at appropriate uh, solutions so that we can uh, minimize the dust nuisance. So once you control the dust nuisance using appropriate sealing options, then you can also uh, try to look at additional benefits that you can derive apart from covering this uh, dust nuisance problems. So in case if you are going to seal the gravel loads, uh, you can control the uh, dust nuisance. So that is one major advantage that we are trying to address. Apart from that, once the surface is sealed, you don't allow any water to percolate into the pavement structure and which weakens the uh, granular materials which are more susceptible to moisture. That is also additional advantage that we are going to get. And uh, you can also extend the life of the pavement and uh, minimize the disintegration of the uh, road surface. Thereby, distresses also can be uh, minimized. And a skip resistance can be improved where the vehicles can travel at a relatively higher speeds and it also serves as a, a renewable uh, coat for the existing gravel surfaces instead of a periodic regraveling. So these are the, some of the benefits you can derive in case if you are going to seal the gravel. Okay. And if you look at the chart uh, from IRCSP 72, so this is the latest version that we are going to see is the 2015 version so in this side most of you are familiar with this you have the separate uh, conditions and the uh, traffic levels so previously we used to have traffic up to t7 only 1 million stand axis now in 2015 version it is extended up to uh, 2 million stand axis but if you look at the other alternate code for high volume roads so the traffic level typically starts from 5 million standard axles, 5 MSA. And you can see that there is a wide gap between a 2 MSA and a 5 MSA. In case if you are going to have traffic lying between 2 MSA to 5 MSA, then you don't know which code you have to use because we don't have any other code. So IRCSP 72 uh, provides solutions or charts only up to 2 MSA, whereas uh, IRC 37 for high volume mode starts from 5 MSA. So to fill this gap, so we are going to have IRC SP20, the old version of the code is being revised now. So it is going to address another uh, two categories will be introduced here. So starting from 2 to 3.5 MSA is going to be one category and uh, 3.5 to 5 MSA is going to be another category. So that will uh, take care of the gap between the high volume road designs and also the low volume road design. But uh, we are interested in the gravel roads. If you look at all the charts, typically you see the gravel roads that are listed in these groups. So these are the actual gravel cross sections that we have. So towards the left hand side of the red line, you can see the entire sections of the gravel roads. So normally we recommend the gravel roads whenever the traffic is less than 0.1 million standard axles. Okay. So you can see 0.1 MSA here, 1 lakh standard axles. Less than that, we are going to recommend the gravel loads. But whenever the subgrade conditions are very poor, 
So we recommend the graph loads only up to 30,000 axles. So beyond that, it is mandatory that we need to seal the surface. Right? So even uh, T3 also, you can see that a, a sealing option is provided and you can see that it is a, a surface dressing in both the cases. Apart from that, for poor subgrade ranging from 3 to 4 percent, also we have a, a sealing option. But the rest of the cases that we are going to see, even for uh, a very uh, good quality of severe soils and traffic up to 0.1 MSA or T3 traffic, we have only gravel loads and we have also seen uh, the various issues with the gravel loads. So most of the people, they are not going to accept the gravel roads uh, to their villages. So the main issue is the gravel, uh, uh, the dust nuisance and apart from that, various other difficulties that they are likely to face and which I have listed uh, previously. So we are trying to look at what are the options that we are going to have so that we can seal all these gravel roads. So typically whatever is recommended by IRC SP72 to seal these surfaces in old and old code. So they recommended surface dressing and also open graded premix surfacing. And apart from that, in the current code, if you are going to look at 2015 version, only surface dressing is recommended for any traffic less than 3 lakh standard access. So up to this category, we need to use only surface dressing and uh, OGPS is recommended only beyond 3 lakh standard access. So the best option is that whenever you are going to go for a gravel roads and if you want to suppress the dust nuisance, we can seal it and the one of the best solution that we have as part of IRC SP 72 2015 is to seal it with a, a surface dressing. So whereas the old code also recommends OGPS and based on that our entire designs are based on the older version of the SP 72. So that is a 2007 version was used for our uh, sealing of gravel roads or pilot project. And uh, if you want to select a gravel road, so these are the factors that we need to take into account. So you can select gravel roads only when the design traffic is less than 0.1 million stand axis. And apart from that, the average daily traffic should be less than 200 vehicles per day. So the, if you satisfy these two conditions, then you can select the uh, gravel roads. Apart from that, we also need to take into account of the annual rainfall also. So you know that the combined effect of rainfall and traffic will lead to erosion of the gravel and periodic regraveling is going to be uh, relatively expensive. So to avoid that problem, uh, so we need to look at the combined effect of both annual rainfall and also the traffic levels. So in case if you are going to look at high rainfall regions where the annual rainfall is going to exceed 1500 millimeters, then gravel roads are recommended in such scenarios only when the traffic is less than 100 vehicles per day. Okay, so beyond that, we don't recommend a gravel roads. For relatively less annual rainfall, 1000 to 1500 millimeters, so traffic up to 150 vehicles per day, we can recommend the gravel roads. And whenever the rainfall is very less, less than 1000 millimeters per annum, then you can extend the traffic even up to 200 vehicles per day also we can recommend the gravel roads. So that is the main criteria that we are going to look at. So design traffic less than 1 lakh standard access and average daily traffic less than 200 vehicles per day. You can straight away go for the gravel roads. And uh, one more option is that we also need to take into account the type of terrain. So longitudinal gradient also plays an important role. So normally you know that uh, during monsoon season, uh, in case if you are going to have a uh, rainwater on the gravel surface on a steeper gradient, the runoff is going to be at a much faster rate and that will lead to higher erosion of the gravel. So that is one of the disadvantage and to address that also we have uh, certain points that need to be uh, taken care of. So whenever annual rainfall is less than 1000 millimeters, so that is a typically dry areas, then we can increase the longitudinal gradient and it can go all the way up to 6%. And uh, in high rainfall regions, typically greater than 1000 millimeters per annum, then the longitudinal gradients are restricted only to 5%, but preferable is that you always try to maintain it below 4% so that you can improve the performance of this 
uh, gravel roads. Okay? And as I said previously, gravel roads are not recommended for hilly areas. The main reason is that you are going to have much more steeper gradients. So that will increase the runoff speed, thereby the erosion of the gravel is going to be much more higher. So we don't recommend uh, gravel roads directly in hilly areas. But you have an option that you can always seal these gravel roads. So whenever you are going to seal the gravel roads, then even at a relatively higher gradients, that means even hilly areas also, you can have a minimum effect of the runoff on the erosion of the surface because you are going to seal that particular surface. So whenever you are going to seal the surface, it is all, always recommended that you can go for a surface dressing as a, a varying course whenever all these conditions are not satisfied. Okay. So if these conditions are not satisfied, then we said that we don't provide a gravel road, but still if you want to go with a gravel, then construct a gravel road, but seal this particular surface. So these are the scenarios under which you can go for a, a gravel road. And uh, there are certain factors that will uh, govern the choice of the uh, gravel roads. That means uh, once you have decided that you want to resurface or uh, provide a black topping or seal the gravel surface, then you can look at the areas. Uh, for example, sealing is recommended for gravel roads whenever you want to construct the gravel roads in a high rainfall areas. Okay? So that means sealing is going to become mandatory in such places. And even if you are going to have dry areas where you are going to have long spells of a dry seasons okay in such cases the moisture present on the surface is going to be very less and a lot of dust will be emanated resulting in the dust nuisance okay. in such areas also it is recommended that you need to seal the surface okay. and uh, gravel sur in such cases if you have decided that you are going to seal the surface then we can omit the gravel surface okay. so typically in a gravel road even though you are going to have a typical gravel section that is going to be made of a gravel surface course you're going to have a gravel base course and you're also going to have a gravel sub base course also so gsb in the sense it is going to be a gravel sub base course okay? so when you are going to seal this surface with a black topping or so in india we mostly go with the surface dressing and most of the other developed countries also they prefer surface dressing which they call it as a chip seals uh, that proves to be one of the option so whenever you are going to seal the surface then we can omit the gravel surface course okay. so that can be omitted and uh, you are going to have the top of the gravel is going to be the granular base so we are going to provide the sealing option directly over the gravel base whenever you are going to go for the uh, sealing options in such cases we need to ensure that the top gravel surface should have a liquid limit less than 20, plasticity index less than 6, and the fine content should be as less as possible. Otherwise, if you don't provide a, a sealing option, that means if you have a gravel surface, gravel base, and a gravel sub-base course, then we need to increase the fine content. So fine content has to be increased wherever you are going to directly use the gravel surface without any black top surfacing. So the main reason is that as you increase the fine content, you know that the percolation of uh, rainwater can be minimized to a, a greater extent. So thereby the rainwater can be drained off a little. So that is the main mechanism that we are uh, trying to address. If you go with a gravel road directly without any sealing option or uh, with a sealing option. So these are the various factors that we consider for the gravel roads. So with this uh, background, let us uh, try to look at what are the sealing options that we have for the gravel roads okay. and uh, before even uh, sealing so we need to make sure that the existing gravel surface should have a pi value as low as possible typically that should be less than uh, 10 okay. so in cases where it is this condition is not satisfied then it may warrant for even stabilization also and one of the major point that we need to take into account for a ceiling is that the surface profile should be perfectly maintained okay so in case if you are going to have irregularities over the transverse profile okay? so this is 
the transfers profile you are going to look at it. So in such case, it is recommended that you uh, provide a, a gravel surface over it so that you make the appropriate profile correction so that the adequate transfer slope is maintained. So in case if adequate transfer slope is not maintained, then the ceiling options, some of the ceiling options are not going to work. And I will also explain you our, our own experiences, what kind of difficulties we faced uh, when you have improper profile corrections. Okay. So it is mandatory that the profile should be perfectly maintained whenever you are going to go for the uh, ceiling options. Okay. So the one option is that you can put a, a granular overlay or a gravel overlay above it. So once the surface is sealed perfectly, assume that this is going to be a, a gravel surface coat. So here we need to apply a slow setting bitumen emulsion so that the bitumen emulsion should be able to percolate into the granular surface course and plug the watts. And you can make it a watertight surface. Over that, you can provide actual sealing option. So let us see what are the sealing options that we have. So there are several sealing options that are available and uh, all these options are not specifically meant only for sealing of gravel loads. They are actually meant for as a preventive maintenance measures. So let us try to look at uh, the various options that we have like a fox seal, sand seal and so on. So I will explain you briefly about uh, each of these uh, sealing options. So the basic one is the fox seal where we apply a bitumen emulsion spray over the prepared surface. And uh, you have option whether you, if you want, you can apply a sand cover or you can even omit the sand cover. And the major advantage is that that is going to be very a uh, cheap or inexpensive treatment process. And you require only a distributor truck to spray the emulsion. And a uh, disadvantage is that compared to other optional treatments that we have, that is going to be a very slippery if you apply too much of a fox seal and the life is going to be relatively short compared to other sealing options. So equipment wise you require just a distributor truck to spray the bitumen emulsion and if you are going to provide a sand spreader then that is going to be an additional equipment. So the typical expected life is going to be a one to a three years. So this is the first type of option that we have and uh, above that uh, second one is a sand seal. So the basic mechanism remains same. We apply bitumen emulsion followed by a cover of a fine aggregate or a sand. So clean sand, you can see that it is a sand seal. Then you can roll it. But uh, for rolling purpose, we use only a pneumatic tire roller. And wherever you are going to have excess sand, that sand need to be uh, removed. So advantage is that compared to the fox seal, this provides a much more thicker coating. And uh, even if you have a polished surface also, a sand seal can improve the friction between the tire and the pavement surface. So these are some of the advantages of the sand seal. And disadvantage is that oh, very uh, thin or fine cracks can be sealed and uh, larger cracks, even if you are going to apply sand seal, they tend to reappear again. So the equipment that you require is, you require a distributor truck to spray the emulsion, then you require a sand spreader and you also need a pneumatic tire roller to compact it. And the life is going to be much more higher compared to the fox seal. You can extend up to three to uh, four years. And one more option that we have is a scrub seal. So we are going to look at a little more advanced version when compared to the sand seal. So the additional feature that we are going to have is a scrub. So this is a term that most of you might have heard that uh, in kitchen, uh, mostly we'll be using the scrub to clean the utensils. So the similar mechanism we also use here. So on the prepared surface, we apply a bitumen emulsion. And over that, we are going to scrub it. Okay. So the bitumen emulsion will be filled into the wide spaces and the fine tracks that are going to be present. So once you complete this process, then we apply a layer of sand or a fine aggregate particles over the emulsion and then again, the scrubbing will be done or a dry broom will be run over the surface so that uh, once you are going to have the cracked surfaces so initially the emulsion will be forced into these voids or uh, cracked surfaces after that we are going to flush in the sand particles also so that is going to seal the complete surface and it is going to be free of voids and also 
the even wider cracks can be closed completely using the scrub seal. So once the sand is laid and a, a drag broom is done over that, then we are going to compact it using a pneumatic tire or roller. Okay? And the excess sand or aggregate particles that are going to be present has to be removed from the surface. So the main advantage of, of scrub seal when compared to sand seal is that even a wider tracks up to 12 millimeters can be sealed properly using the scrub seal. And disadvantage is that the technology is relatively new and most of the contractors might be unfamiliar with this particular method. And uh, equipment required is you require a distributor truck to spray the emulsion, the aggregate, fine aggregate spreader, and pneumatic tire roller, and also additional brooming mechanism compared to the previous case. And the life is uh, relatively higher. You can extend up to four to six years. Then uh, one more most widely used uh, sealing option is called as a chip seal. This is not uh, new to us. We call it as a surface dressing. And this is considered as a most widely used surface treatment. And uh, this was very popular in our country previously. But uh, now the usage has been minimized to a greater extent. And now IRC or even uh, NDDA is uh, recommending the use of surface dressing to a, a greater extent. So the mechanism is again the same. We apply a spray of a bitumen over the prepared surface. Then we spread the aggregate particles and do the rolling using a pneumatic tread a roller and excess aggregate we are going to remove it by a blooming okay so the mechanism whatever you have seen previously holds good even for chip seal or a surface dressing so the advantage is that you can correct a minor distresses like a raveling and even seal the small cracks present over the old surface and you can improve the skid resistance this is one of the important aspects if you look at the, uh, the road, road infrastructure surfaces. in our country and immediately after placement of the aggregate, the after compaction process is completed, we can open the road to the traffic. But we need to restrict the speed of the uh, vehicles. And one of the major disadvantages is that you need to properly control the rate of spread of the binder and also the rate of spread of the aggregate particles. In case if you are going to have too much of binder spread over the prepared surface, so that is going to result in bleeding. And in case if you are going to have deficit binder content or a higher aggregate particles, that is going to result in loose chips that again result into fly rocks or loose chips, which can even break the windshields of the vehicles. Okay. So both ways it is going to be a, a disadvantage to us. So we need to properly control the proportion of binder and also the rate of spread of the aggregate particles also. And finally, whatever dust that is created that need to be uh, removed by brooming once the aggregates are spread over the prepared surface. And we require a similar set of uh, equipment. A distributor truck is required to spread the binder. Then we need to spread the fine aggregate particles. And then we do a rolling using pneumatic tire and finally a mechanical brooming be done to remove the loose particles present over it. And the life uh, we can get up to four to six years, just like a a previous case and there are multiple layers which you can provide so normally we provide a, a coarser aggregate particles at the lower layers and as you move to the top the second layer is will be very fine particles typically you call it as a inky layers okay. so depending upon the size of the particles the thickness is going to vary and in turn the cost of the layers are also going to change depending upon the number of layers that we are going to provide and uh, most widely used uh, maintenance technique nowadays is called as a, a slurry seal. So which is a, a mixture of slow setting cationic bitumen emulsion, fine aggregate and various types of mineral fillers and additives along with the water will be used. And you will have a special type of vehicle that will be uh, laying this complete mixture over the prepared surface. And uh, typically we have three types of uh, grades in it, type 1, type 2 and type 3. So type 1 is very thin, 2 to 3 millimeters, whereas a type 2 extends up to 6 millimeters and a type 3 is up to 8 millimeters. So advantages also vary widely as you increase these types and increase the size fractions. So the lower size can only fill headline cracks, whereas the intermediate type, type 2, can fill cracks up to 1 to 3 millimeters 
and you can use it as a preventive treatment up to 40 commercial vehicles per day whereas a type 3 it can even fill up to 3 to 6 millimeter wide cracks and you can extend up to 1500 commercial vehicles per day as a, a preventive or a renewal treatment and the advantage is that it provides a much more smoother surface compared to the chip seal. Chip seal is going to be a much rough surface because of the lower cost and uh, slurry seal is going to improve the riding quality. And disadvantage is that a special type of equipment uh, is required which may not be available locally. Okay? So uh, 10 years or 15 years back uh, we used to have only just one equipment in the entire country. Now there is uh, several uh, equipment that are available. Uh, throughout the country and uh, the cost uh, has also decreased to a, a greater extent and the typical life is of uh, four to six years now we have seen the disadvantages of uh, chip seals and also some of the advantages of the slurry seals and a cape seal is a combination of both of them okay so a chip seal we are seeing that we are going to get a rough surface and a slurry seal we are seeing that it is going to give a fine finishing surface so cape seal is a combination of uh, these two initially you apply a chip seal over that we are going to apply a slurry seal over that so that the advantages of both of them we can combine them together and this technology was developed in south africa in a province called uh, cape so that is how the name cape uh, seal was introduced okay. so the process remains the same once the chip seal is done we remove the excess aggregate particles and over that we are going to provide a, a slurry seal surface The advantage is that the cape seal is going to increase the life of the chip seal by binding the chips uh, together and even the loose particles the flying of the aggregate particles also you can minimize to a greater extent if you are going to uh, seal the chip seals using the slurry seal so that results into a cape seal and disadvantage is that you require uh, equipment related to both uh, chip seal and also the slurry seal and construction time is going to be a little longer and it is going to be relatively expensive compared to other options. So you require uh, both the equipment required for chip seal and also for a slurry seal. And overall life is going to be much more higher. You can extend the life up to six to eight years using the cape seal. And the latest technology that we have is called as a micro surfacing, which is uh, the process is similar to slurry seal. And the thickness is going to be uh, relatively higher compared to the slurry seal. And the ingredients are mainly different here. So we are going to use a polymer modified bitumen emulsion here. Apart from that, the ingredients, uh, the fillers can be different and various types of additives can be used. The role of additives is mainly to control the mixing and the setting time of the final mix. So advantage is that you can provide a thicker layer compared to the slurry seal. And even the ruts can be filled using the micro surfacing and it can be used as a minor leveling issues can also be corrected using the micro surfacing okay. so the curing time is also relatively faster thereby traffic can be opened immediately after a laying of the micro surfacing okay. so but uh, all these things comes at a relatively higher cost so the similar equipment whatever you have seen for a slurry seal can also be used for micro surfacing and you get a similar life of up to eight years using the uh, micro surfacing so let us look at uh, some of the brief details of a uh, surface dressing which we already seen so on the prepared surface we are going to apply the first coat of the binder over the binder we are going to apply a uniformly graded aggregate then we apply a second coat of binder and over that we are going to apply a smaller aggregate particles so typically you can see the example here so 13.2 is used for the lower layer and 9.5 is used on the upper surface i will also explain you the complete mechanism of it so once you spread all these particles, we are going to compact it using a, a pneumatic tire roller. So surface dressing, there are total four types. So the basic version that we have seen is called as a single coat surface dressing, where over the prepared surface, so in case if it is going to be a, a granular surface or a gravel surface, then we need to prime the surface. Before that, we also do the pre-wetting to minimize the moisture loss from the uh, bituminous emulsion. Then we apply the spray of the binder, then add the chippings over it. Okay. Then do the uh, rolling process. Whereas in case of the second type, that is a two-coat surface dressing, 
So up to here, the process is similar to that of the first one. Whereas here, we are going to add one more spray of a binder. And we add a smaller H pins here. So which is similar to that of this particular case. And a third type is called as a, a rack tin. So here, the binder that you see here, that is omitted, which result in a, a rack tin. Okay. Whereas if you remove this binder in the second type, that results in a sandwich type of construction. Okay. So these are the four types of uh, surface dressing, which has been used widely across uh, several countries. Okay. So the technique of uh, construction of surface dressing is uh, a bit different. Here we are going to consider only uniform sized aggregate particles. Okay. So you can see that the aggregate particle size is more or less uh, similar. Okay. And uh, once you spray the bitumen particles, or I'm sorry, the bitumen, and uh, over that you are going to spread the aggregate particles. Before rolling, the aggregate particles will not be resting on their flat surfaces. Okay. So once you compact them, then the aggregate particles will be resting on the flat surfaces. So the depth of embedment very much depends upon the height the binder is going to rise above the uh, prepared surface. Okay. So typically, if you look at these uh, three figures, so the first one is where once you apply the bituminous binder or the prepared surface, then we are going to spread the aggregate particles. Okay. So the typical air wards ranges up to 50%. So immediately after the rolling, the air wards will decrease to 30%. You can see that the aggregate particles are getting embedded into the binder film or the binder level is going to slowly rise up. So once you allow the traffic, we are going to have two levels of uh, densification. So this process, we call it as a, a primary compaction, which we are going to do it using a pneumatic type rollers. And the second process, our second type of compaction is going to be called as a secondary compaction, which will be done by the traffic. We are not going to use any rollers. So the aggregates will be further embedded and the binder is expected to rise up to 75% of the average least dimension of the aggregate particles. So if you look at all the particles, we look at the average least dimension of the aggregate particles so then average over all the particles so that results in this average at least dimension that typically results in the maximum thickness okay. so what is the thickness of the total layer that we are going to get so out of this ald the binder is expected to raise up to 75 percent of the average least dimension so less than this results in problems which is not recommended and if the binder rises above that also it results in certain issues which we will see a, a little later okay so the thickness of the finished layer finally results into the thickness of the complete layer okay so average least dimension is going to decide upon the thickness of the surface dressing so if you are going to change the or increase the thickness of the layer normally we change the average least dimension okay? so typically we are going to pick a different nominal maximum aggregate sizes so that you can, it will result into different types of average list dimensions and ultimately the different thickness of the bitman layers. So as I said previously, we need to optimize it and make sure that the bitman should rise up to 75% of the average least dimension. So in case if the thickness is going to be more than this recommended value, so that means the binder will rise up to much more higher level and the vehicle tire will get in direct contact with the binder film. Okay, so that results in a slippery surface. And in case if the binder level is going to be less than 0.75 times of ALD, then the aggregate emb embedment will not be proper. Okay. So due to movement of the vehicles, the aggregate particles may get dislodged from the surface. So the loose aggregates will be coming out and you're going to have the loss of aggregate particles from the road surface. So we need to optimize the embedment up to 75% of the average least dimension. Okay. So the main advantage of the surface dressing is that you are going to have the surface channels. Okay. So you are going to have various aggregate particles that will be embedded and the water can easily pass through as a surface channels. 
So mainly the water deposited over the surface can be minimized to the greater extent and the hydro penning effects can be uh, reduced. And the vehicle tire will have a direct contact with the aggregate particles so that the friction between the tire and pavement surface can also be increased. So that is going to be the one of the best advantage of the surface testing which comes at a much more uh, lower cost. And uh, uh, let us try to look at uh, what is the significance of this uh, single sized particles and in case if you are going to have oversized particles or lower sized particles uh, what is going to happen so that can be understood easily by looking at this particular uh, figure so in this figure you can see that uh, the average least dimension is given here okay so that is the thickness of the layer okay? so those are the typical similar sized particles that you are going to see. In case if you are going to have a large sized oversized particle. So you can see the vehicle tire envelope. Okay? So this is the envelope of the tire. And if you have a vehicle moving over this particular surface and if the aggregate particle is going to project above the average least dimension. So the vehicle will tire will come and hit this aggregate particles and uh, along the weaker plane the particle is likely to fracture otherwise if the embedment is weak the aggregate particle may get even dislodged from the, the surfaces so that is the disadvantage of using oversized particles so it is not recommended to use oversized particles even undersized particles are also not recommended okay so these particles becomes as a ineffective particles because they are going to get submerged into the binder so the vehicle tire is not going to make any contact with these aggregate particles whenever you are going to use uniform sized particles you are going to get better friction between the tire and the pavement surfaces okay. so that will result in improved performance of the pavement so uniform sized aggregate particles is very much designed for the surface testing okay. so if you are familiar with the aggregate gradations so, so typically we plot a percentage passing on y-axis and a sieve size on x-axis and this is the uniform gradation that we see here okay. and uh, depending upon the sizes if you want you can shift this curve towards the right hand side and if you want to reduce the thickness or the average least dimension then we can shift the curve any side towards the left hand side okay so the sizes can be reduced depending upon the ranges that we are going to look at. So that is the typical OP uniform gradation that we are going to use for surface testing. So apart from that, we'll also have other types of sealing options like a open graded plumic surfacing. As the name suggests, uh, the gradation results in an open gradation. So the open gradation is what you see here. So this is the open gradation. And uh, typically, uh, we call the middle aggregate passing 2.36 millimeters as a fine-sized materials. And uh, you can see that the percentage of fines are very less and you have more coarse particles. So you can see that the fine percentage is very, very less. 2.36 passing is only approximately 10%, whereas you have 90% of the material retained over that. So that results in a belly-shaped curve, which results in relatively higher watts. So because of the higher watts, rainwater can easily percolate into the structure. But advantage is that, so higher the watts, we are going to have less fine fraction and a more coarser fraction. When you, whenever you are going to have more coarser fraction, you know that the surface area of the coarse particles is going to be less and the required bitumen content to coat these particles will also decrease. Thereby, the overall cost of the layers also comes down. So that is how we are going to reduce the cost of this open graded premix surfacing. But uh, to address the issue of higher air watts, we need to apply a seal coat over the open graded premix surfacing. Okay. So typically we apply a 20 millimeter thick OJPC surface and this should be followed by a seal coat. So the main purpose is to seal the excess watts that are present in the OJPS layer. And we have three types of sealing options that we have and uh, type A seal coat is similar to the top surface dressing. Okay. So where you, you apply a layer of a bituminous binder or that you are going to spread the fine chips. Okay. So that is called as a type A. Apart from that we also have a premixed application 
called a type B and a type C, where aggregate particles will be pre-coated with a binder. And the size of the particles are going to increase when you move from type B to type C. And there is one more gradation called as a close graded premixed uh, surfacing, where you tend to move more towards the dense gradation. Okay. So this is a typical dense gradation. Normally we use it for high volume roads, where we can see bituminous concrete or even dense graded uh, bituminous macadam. Okay. So compared to OGPUs, when you tend to move your curve more towards the denser curve, that results into this uh, mixed seal surfacing or a closed graded uh, premixed surfacing. So the thickness is also similar to that, but uh, depending upon the annual rainfall, we are, we are going to use uh, two types here, type A or a type B. Type A is a more fine graded, which will be used uh, for a relatively high rainfall regions. So in uh, low rainfall regions, we recommend a type B closed graded premix surfacing layer. Okay. So these are the various uh, selling options that are available to us. And with this background, uh, we have constructed a, a gravel road. So in fact, a, a old road was existing and uh, that old road we wanted to convert into a, a gravel road and subsequently we wanted to seal it. So that is uh, one of the case study that I'm going to present. So this is quite old road. Uh, the process has started uh, way back in 2008-9. And uh, even though we got the project from uh, Ministry of Rural Development, and uh, we are supported by uh, government of Andhra Pradesh and uh, the current uh, government of Telangana also for the construction of the road. And when we started this construction, there was a old road and uh, we have constructed a gravel road above it and we wanted to seal this surface. And in order to seal this surface, uh, there was a, one of the popular uh, sealing technique uh, in most of the South East Asian countries like the Philippines, where they used to seal the gravel surfaces with a very thin slurry seals. So there is a a company which produces a commercial layer. I'm not going to mention those uh, names here. So the standard name, you can take it as a slurry seal, even though you have a commercial name for it. Okay. So it is a typical slurry seal. And you also seen uh, various types, type one, type two, and type three. So they intend to, to provide type two and a type three slurry seals over this particular surface. And to have a comparison with the already existing technologies in India, we want internet to have a surface dressing as a second alternative. So the first sealing option was a slurry seal with a type two, type three, and the alternative to this for comparison was a surface dressing. And uh, you know that uh, almost uh, uh, 12 to 15 years back, uh, there was no instrument to lay this slurry seal layer or the prepared surfaces. So we used to have only one instrument located in the capital region and there were certain procedural issues to bring that equipment to Warangal for the construction of this road and the entire project got delayed for several years of the order of four, three to four years. So then finally uh, we have changed the plan and uh, discarded this particular sealing option. So instead of uh, slurry seal, we replaced uh, this with an open graded premixed surfacing. So the alternative A was with OGPS, and the alternative B was using with a, a surface dressing. Right. So the background. This was the background of this particular case study, and uh, the road that we have selected uh, is between uh, one of the major road connecting Ganpur to Palakurti and there is a village called Komoti Gudem. So the road was connecting this two locations and it was uh, passing through two intermediate habitations. So earlier it, it was located in combined Warangal district and now it is this particular road is separated and merged with a adjacent district called Jangao. 
Now we considered uh, two ceiling options. One is the surface dressing. Second one is the open graded uh, premix surfacing. Two types of binders were considered in this study. One is uh, a unmodified uh, straight run bitumen. And the second one is a bitumen emulsion. And we have varied the quantity of priming. So let me also highlight that uh, we have followed the older version. So the entire process started uh, way back in 2009. So we followed the previous version, IRC SP72 2007 version for the entire process. So you see slight uh, changes. So the priming rate uh, varied from 9 to 12 kgs per 10 square meters. So we considered uh, the lower limit and also the upper limit. The gravel surfaces, we consider two different sources with uh, two different modifications, which we call it as a type 1 and a, a type 2. So this was a typical section that was uh, considered for the study. So the entire road stretch was divided into two sections. The first section, the top one that you see is everywhere you see only surface dressing, whereas in the bottom section, we see open graded premix surfacing. So each of these two sections was subdivided into another eight subsections. Okay. So you can see total eight subsections here. And out of these eight subsections, the originally we used to have a existing gravel surface. So the design we intend to increase it to 100 millimeters. And if you look at the overall thickness, of this gravel surface, it results in 275 millimeters, which corresponds to T3 and S3 group. Okay. So traffic of a T3 and a subdued range of S3. And here also you see the similar structure. Only difference is that the ceiling options are different. Okay. So on the left hand side for sections one, two, three, and four, you can see that the entire surface is made of surface course type 1 whereas on the right hand side you see surface course type 2 so the same structure is again repeated even for the OGPS section also above that we have changed the priming types so priming 1 was 9 kg per 10 square meters whereas the priming 2 was 12 kilogram per 10 square meters so from log logistics point of view to have a continuous construction so we P1, P2, then we continued with again P2 and P1 and followed by P1 and P2. Okay. So that uh, at a time you can lay this priming 1 and priming 2 followed by again priming 2 followed by priming 1. And the same process we adopted even for OGPS section. Then for surface dressing we changed with the two binders. One is with the emulsion, second one is with a bitumen. Okay. So overall it resulted in eight different sections and eight plus eight 16 different sections we could get based on this two types of sealing options surface dressing and a ogps with a seal coat so the aggregate that we have selected satisfied all the basic requirements and uh, the current practice that you see is that minimum cbr value is 20 uh, percent for the sub base course but wherever the metal is not available in a, within economical lead, then you can always reduce it at the discretion of the local authorities. So the target is fixed as a 15%. And when you try to look at uh, the nearby quarries, so the CBR value of the available soil was only 7% gravel. Or uh, directly, if you are going to use the gravel deposit, it resulted in only. 7% of CBR. So the existing sub base course of the road 50 mm was carified and it was mixed with a, a borrowed material that is the baby chips were borrowed and the borrowed material consisted of 60% of a quarry material which was borrowed from Ranganayakulagutta quarry and to this we added 25% of aggregate passing through 12.5 mm sieve and 15% of the material passing through 4.75 mm sieve. And uh, we have considered 50% of this borrowed material. So once this material is prepared, 50% of this material is blended with 50% uh, of the existing soil. So all these studies we have taken up in the laboratory uh, using, with the help of our MTech students, we have 
tried several combinations and uh, this is one combination which resulted in a CBR value of a 15 percent okay so this mixture was combined together so that the combined thickness of 100 millimeters was uh, prepared for this subbase course so this was the existing gravel subbase which was modified and uh, modification we have done it separately for the two stretches so for one of the stretch that is the first stretch is a surface dressing stretch you can see that so here we adopted this particular blending ratio whereas in the second section of ogps stretch so the existing soil was relatively better so we have increased the proportion of existing soil from 50 to 75 percent it is increased and we have reduced the borrowed soil or the material from the quarry plus the combination of the chips that we have added to this material so thereby the cost also decreased slightly okay so you can see that the surface dressing it was a 1 lakh 94000 per kilometer whereas it is only 1.29 lakh per a kilometer because of the reduction in the borrowed soil from 50 percent to the at 25 percent so when you compare the cost with a conventional 100 millimeter of gsp thickness so you can see that there is a savings in here yeah. so 2.24 lakhs was the conventional gsp 100 millimeter thick whereas uh, these two stretches also we use the same 100 millimeters by utilizing the existing gravel and the borrowed gravel also by modifying the gravel suitably to get the target CBR value of 15 percent and above that we wanted to construct a gravel base course so even though the current practice recommends that uh, the lower base should have a 50 percent CBR and upper base should have a 80 percent CBR and depending upon the availability of the local soils we have fixed the target CBR as a 30 percent for this particular road and we have we could achieve that by utilizing the same quarry material 50 percent of the Ranganai kilometer soil this we increase the proportion 40 percent is used and we altered the percentage passing 4.75 mcu and this particular blend resulted in a CBR value close to 30 percent slightly more than 30 percent we could not achieve 50 percent the cost uh, became relatively higher increased significantly so to reduce the cost we targeted only for a 30 percent and we limited the proportions to only 50 percent here and uh, the overall cost of a surface testing and ogps were like this 3.26 lakhs per kilometer and the base course we kept it same for both surface testing and uh, ogps sections and compared to the conventional 75 mm waterborne macadam grading 2 you can see that there is a, a savings in the cost of the base course construction also so over this we adopted the same gravel base course whatever target CBR of 30 we achieved we have provided the same 30 CBR even for the uh, gravel surface course so the first quarry directly resulted this particular proportion resulted in the target CBR of 30 percent to have one more gravel surface course we looked at another nearby quarry called as a Komala quarry so it was relatively better compared to this particular quarry so we enhanced the proportion of the original quarry material from 50 to 60 percent and uh, reduce the proportion of the blends okay. so 40 is reduced to 20 percent whereas uh, this proportion is slightly enhanced from 10 to 20 percent so overall you can see that there is a 10 percent increase in the proportion of the quarry soil even though there is a change in proportion of 12.5 and 4.75 mm metal passing so these two proportions resulted in a CBR values exceeding 30 percent and this combination we call it as a surface course type one so we have two gravel surfaces gravel surface type one and a gravel surface type two and if you look at a cost comparison of these surface courses so 2.82 lakhs is for type one and 2.61 is for a type two okay. there is a typo here so this should have been type 2 and uh, excluding the uh, surface treatment with a bituminous layer 
or without a ceiling option, we try to make a cost comparison between the conventional surface without ceiling and a gravel surface without ceiling. So we could see that there is a almost 40% savings in the cost. So on an average, I have taken average of all these four options that we have and overall it is coming to 7.6 lakhs on an average and the alternative conventional one with 125 mm GSP, 75 mm WBM grading 2 and over that 75 mm WBM grading 3 with a total thickness of uh, the similar 150 and uh, 275 millimeters. So you can see that there is a 40% savings in the, the cost without surface treatment. So when you compare with the surface treatment, so the surface treatment cost, uh, we kept it as the same and we considered OGPES as an optional over this. For the conventional uh, payment, we applied the OGPES thickness here. The cost is the same for gravel surfaces. These are all the gravel sections. This is the average one, average values. And these are the benchmark for a comparison. So by considering the surface treatment also, we could see that overall there was a 30% savings when you construct a gravel surface and seal it with a, a traditional manner, either using surface dressing or a OGPS, and these are only the average values. Okay. So in case if you are going to make a comparison with uh, surface dressing, they turn out to be relatively less compared to the OGPS sections. So then we started the construction of the road initially in 2009, and the final construction could be completed only in the year 2000. 13 due to various uh, procedural delays. So the PMGS5 signboard was erected and uh, so one of the major problem uh, on village roads is the movement of the cage wheel tractor. So a caution board was also erected and uh, even villagers were asked to notify or inform the local engineers about the movement of the cage wheel tractors but uh, we could not succeed in that uh, direction. So the existing gravel surface, as I said, even though we started the, the process in 2009, there was a procedural delays and the final construction could be started only in the 2013. So it was a gravel road which was uh, serving almost for three to four years. And the traffic used to move on these gravel surfaces uh, to the speeds of 250 to 60 kilometers per hour. And uh, most of the villagers were very comfortable traveling at uh, this relatively higher speeds. So in the year 2013, over this particular gravel surfaces, we started the sailing options. So we considered all those possible 16 options, whatever I mentioned previously, all those options we considered. So the initial gravel surfaces, we have cleaned it. And uh, as I said previously, one of the major advantage uh, because of procedural delays, we could not correct is the surface depressions. Okay, so the profile correction could not be finished due to some of the procedural issues which was unavoidable. Okay. So even if you wanted to provide a, a thin surface of gravel, we could not achieve a proper bond with a already consolidated a gravel surfaces which was almost a three to a four years old. So we have ignored the slight depressions but later that has affected our the performance of the road also and I will also show you that. So the dust present over the gravel surfaces was cleaned completely and uh, pre-wetting was done so that uh, the moisture loss from the bitumen emulsion could be minimized. Then we applied a bitumen emulsion to plug the void surfaces over the gravel surface cores. Then we spread the binders. So we considered both cases bitumen emulsion and also the VG grade binder and uh, aggregates were spread over that and uh, we could not get a pneumatic tad roller locally so we went on with a steel tied roller and once the aggregates were spread and it was compacted using a steel tied roller and you can see the completed construction of the surface dressing layer over the gravel surface course. and uh, once we uh, constructed it there were several complaints from the local villagers saying that uh, there is no bitumen in this particular road and they started complaining that uh, the people have not used the bitumen here because they could see only the white road. 
and uh, the main mechanism of surface stressing is that as soon as we constrict we see only the exposed aggregate surface the binder starts uh, rising up only after secondary compaction so this is the primary compaction and once you allow the traffic that is a secondary compaction the binder level starts rising up okay. so after typically one to two weeks time the black surface starts appearing so the excess uh, aggregate particles were broomed and up removed from the surface so this was the finished surface after a primary compaction then we allowed for a secondary compaction so the similar process we repeated even for a bitumen as the a binder also and completed this construction a process okay so this is stretch is using bitumen binder then the rest of the half of the section we have taken with the open grade premix surfacing one with a bitumen binder and a second one with a bitumen emulsion so one of the disadvantage as i mentioned we could not complete the profile correction so you can see that uh, during pre wetting stage itself there is a stagnation of rain water this clearly shows that the surface profile is not properly maintained and there are irregularities or depressions where water got stagnated here and uh, this has affected surface dressing section a lot and and there was no influence of such issues on a ogps stretch so because ogps could correct the profile corrections whereas surface dressing uh, could not be used for uh, profile corrections and even the entire uh, heating was done locally using a concrete mixer and uh, ogps layers were uh, constructed and final layers were compacted and a, a sealed surface. So you can see the complete uh, construction process. So once the road was constructed, uh, starting from the year 2013, our MTech students started evaluating the payment for roughness using uh, Medlin. We tried to look uh, looked at the modli value or deflection values using the loadman and measured the skid resistance. Then there are depths. And the finished surface you can see the two surfaces. So this is the surface dressing with a bitumen emulsion and the other one is surface dressing with a bitumen binder. So you may not be able to clearly see the cutoff between the binder and the emulsion. As, uh, in this photograph you can see better for open graded premix surfacing where the binder is completely exposed. Okay, So half of the section you can see that. So this side is a bitumen binder whereas uh, this side it is a bitumen emulsion. The color difference you can clearly see between bitumen emulsion and also the bitumen binder and on surface dressing section as i said uh, because of the improper profile correction so these are the isolated spots where there was excess binder that got deposited okay so these are excess binder spots you can see here so that is a uh, one distress that we have observed and one more major problem that we have faced is uh, with the cage wheels so you can see the marks or imprints of the cage wheel tractors so these are the lines because these are the thin surfaces which does not add any strength to the pavement the functional layers you can see the depth of the cut so this was one pass so if you take a zoom into one of these portion that is the cut that you can see so even one pass can damage and you can see the weakening of the adjacent surfaces the fine cracks you can clearly notice with the, just one pass of a cage wheel tractor and you can imagine what would be the fate of this particular layer after several passes of the cage wheel tractors so after several years you could see that uh, you can see in the background these are the imprints of the cage wheel tractors so slowly potholes started initiating and it started growing in size you can see the potholes and the complete gravel surface got exposed in uh, some of the locations and some of the locations so you can see a lot of several potholes got interlinked uh, mainly due to the movement of the cage wheel tractors and uh, some of the locations so uh, there was no proper drainage and uh, can see the stagnation of rainwater that also resulted in the edge failures and there were also man-made cuts to lay the pipelines from one side to the other side so there you can see some of the edge failures potholes 
and uh, isolated cracking sound. So cracking was very few. This was only location where the cracking was observed. And uh, these are some of the man-made cuts that you can see. Apart from that, uh, edge failures are very much visible, mostly near the code portions. So these are the man-made cuts. And uh, another parameter that contributed towards the distress is that uh, uh, there was a local quarry where uh, most of the trucks used to transport the huge uh, rocks uh, during the night time. So that also resulted in a huge damage to the pavement. And uh, the traffic was isolated only onto one of the section. So it was not uniform over OGPS and the surface dressing section. So we could not make a one-to-one -one comparison between OGPS and the surface dressing as the traffic was completely uh, different. So apart from that, even there was a moment of uh, solid wheel cards, which also resulted in added to the damages on some of the distresses. So even after three years, uh, some of the stretches uh, were re in really good condition. So in 2016, when we visited after three years of construction, you can see some of the sections in really good condition without any signs of any distresses. So these are the good sections that we can see in the year 2016 and even the movement of the cage wheel tractors has not uh, resulted in any damages on some of the sections. So you can see the OGPS surface are uh, very clearly here. So uh, after collection of this data, we could publish uh, two papers, one based on the surface dressing and a second paper based on the open graded uh, premix surfacing. So we could not uh, combine these two and uh, publish it because the traffic levels were different on uh, both these uh, sections. And uh, overall performance, if we could compare, even though uh, we should not compare OGPS and the surface uh, dressing sections, so if you look at the IRA values on OGPS sections, on an average, the values were close to 3.5 meter per kilometer. Okay, so let me take a 3.5 is somewhere here. So this is the values if I compare with the IRA of the surface dressing. But on an average, you can see that the surface dressing roughness values are relatively higher. They are around uh, seven or a seven and a half so almost uh, double the roughness values and uh, surface dressing uh, hereafter i'm not going to show you i will show you only the results of the ogps sections and uh, on ogps sections even though out of the eight sections most of the sections uh, performed very well there were only isolated failures more we can attribute uh, these distresses mostly to movement of the cage wheeled uh, tractors and uh, some of the sections you can see that out of eight, uh, we could uh, observe raveling on only three sections. Five sections, there was no raveling. Similarly, potholes were observed on either side, so you can see significant potholes. Okay, so, if you look at this, these are emulsion sections on here and here. Okay, so, whereas uh, we could observe that the binder sections performed relatively better when compared to the emulsion sections on either side. The similar performance we could observe even for edge cracks also. And overall, these this were the observations uh, that we could made uh, from this particular uh, pilot project. Okay. So roughness uh, was observed to be less on OGP sections where bitumen was used when compared to the emulsion. But uh, higher texture depths were observed in sections uh, with bitumen when compared to bitumen emulsion sections. Anyway, binder will not have a, any effect on the skid resistance. So that is one parameter uh, observation that can be ignored here. And uh, the major observation was the lower distresses were observed, including rutting, raveling, potholes, edge failures on OGPS sections, which were constructed with bitumen, whereas the highest distresses were observed on emulsion sections. Okay. So overall, with OGPS sections constructed with the bitumen performed better when compared to emulsions, but uh, directly we cannot say that bitumen performance is better when compared to bitumen emulsions. So one problem is that uh, 
there were KH wheel tractors and we could not monitor at what point uh, they have entered on, onto the road and where they have exited. So the mixed performance could be ascribed only mainly due to this KH wheel tractors. And in order to get a better performance, uh, we need to construct several such sections across uh, the country where we have different types of uh, gravel deposits with uh, different uh, traffic scenarios and with the uh, different uh, subgrade conditions and also with the uh, different climatic conditions then we can come out with a proper uh, logical reasons yeah, there were almost uh, nine different mtech students so who helped us in completing this particular project so so most of the students, the first five students have spent the complete time in the laboratory in designing the mixes and evaluating the performance in the laboratory. Uh, these are the four students who have spent their time in the field. Uh, the team consists of these uh, three faculty members so who are also the coordinators of this particular uh, training program. And uh, we acknowledge uh, Enrida Panchayat Raj Engineering Department and also our institute uh, and mainly the backbone of the project was our students who could uh, work both in the laboratory and in the field to complete this project so thank you very much in case if you have any queries i can take up those questions